So we've got a DeWalt compound miter saw. Customer dropped it off, didn't say what was going on with it, but I just tried to plug it in and it's not working whatsoever, not doing anything. So I'm gonna show you how to diagnose this and what to do to fix an issue like this. So we uh, take this cord and unwrap it and all that good stuff, of course. Pull the pin here and let it go ahead and come up so the blade guard's on. This is a DW703. It's a type one. Uh, standard for a lot of these, there's not a whole lot of difference on many of them. Pretty much the same on off design. Nothing too terribly special, but basically, if I plug this in here, just a standard cord. Go ahead and plug it in and hit the button. I'm getting nothing right now. Nothing whatsoever when I hit the, when I pull the trigger. So, I'm get it down here, go ahead and unplug it. So with a meter, it doesn't matter what kind of meter you have, but in order to test this, what you wanna do is you wanna put it on the beep setting. It usually looks like that with three lines. I'm not sure if you can see it. Kinda of looks like a beep sign up in the top there. Yep, right above the OL. So. You'll be on that, so when you touch the two together, and you can also put it on ohms, it'll be a straight connection. If you're getting a, a straight through connection, that's what we're looking for when we're doing all this testing. So if you have your unit ready, that'll be nice and easy, but really any meter will do that from the old school to the new school. They're all pretty much the same. And on the top here, we've got a couple Looks like I keep touching them back together over here, so we've got a couple, uh, I think they're T30s up top. We're going to remove those real quick, and then we're going to get the T20s that hold the rest of the handle on. So the top two T30s, they go all the way down into the casing of the unit. We take those off and the whole top handle comes off. And then we can switch over to the T20s. Get me another impact, so I have two. I don't know what the heck's up with my meter. I'm not touching anything, and it keeps going off. But we're going to take all these apart so we can get this handle completely off of here. Now, some of them have places to open. If it's got a little door with two screws in it somewhere here, you don't have to take those two off. That's just for the door. Some of them have, like, lights and things on them. But otherwise, we'll take all the screws out of the top. I'm not sure why that's a different size. That's a little strange. Normally they don't do something like that to us. This one here looks like a T15 instead of a T20. Again, normally they're all the same size, so I don't know if this has been replaced or what, but. Now the whole top just comes right out. And you've got all your wiring. Now you want to make sure it's unplugged when you get to this. You don't want to touch anything and get to any electricity or anything like that. Although you can also test it that way. But if we take our meter and we go to one of these, if you go to the uh, to the large spade with your connector and go to your white, maybe it's backwards of that. I was thinking that was the case though. Yeah be the large spade to our white. Do we already find the problem here? Oh, apparently it, when it just shut off, it got me off of the beep. So large spade back to the white is beeping. So that means we have a connection from here all the way up to here. So we know we're getting power to our white wire. If we go to the small spade, the one that's skinnier, that's going to be our power coming in. So it goes straight from there and it comes up over to the switch on the one side. So we're going to check the bottom side of the switch here directly to it. It's getting a beep from there to there. So we know we're getting power to this switch and we're getting power to the neutral going to the motor at this point. So we know the cord's good. If the cord's bad at this point, you can replace the cord. Uh, you, this is just a standard. A lot of times it's written into the side. <clears throat> so this is a 14 American wire gauge 2C, which means there's two wires. That's all you need to do is get a standard cord 
that's a 2c however long you want it you know you don't want to go much longer because it's not rated for much more amperage if you go much longer but you can just replace that cord it's just two more um, screws here to take out all you've got to do is unscrew your wire and put another connector on it or you can just snip it right here and put another wire connector on it and your cord is replaced at that point all you got to do is switch over the other piece here super super easy to do uh, and, and that is the issue a lot of times not in this case though so next we're going to go ahead and go to the switch now the switch is a direct through and then i believe it also has a break that's why there's more wires going to it i'm not 100 percent sure but we're going to check it out here so we're going to test across the top too that's not doing anything for me the straight through apparently oh so what we're probably doing we're probably picking up the yeah so we're picking up the signal back from the unit <clears throat> so these are probably the two that go down to the armature if i had to guess now if i'm testing those yeah so the two wires have a circuit because it's going directly to the motor to the armature of the unit or i'm sorry to the fields of the unit now if we test from here across still not getting anything okay so it's okay so this is a normally closed circuit from the top to the bottom and this one's a normally open circuit from the top to the bottom no we're not yeah there we go yeah so this switch works a little bit different than what i was thinking so the black wire basically goes directly through to here and it's open normally so that means that when it's uh before you push it <clears throat> it's normally open which means before you push it this circuit from here to here is not going to be connected but after you push it it will be connected now this does the opposite from there to there is connected until you let off of it and then it's open so as soon as you push it it's open but otherwise it's closed all right so we know our switch is working good at this point we know everything there is good so we should be getting power down to the armature in the fields of the unit so the next thing we're going to do i'm actually going to go ahead and seal all this back up because we don't need to be in here we know our switch is working good we know that the uh we know that the cord's good let's go ahead and put this back together just real quick Now, as I say, it's a standard unit. Then it's got something a little bit different, right? So there's four of these that have these fine thread. Those are gonna be the four that go into the motor. So that's screw into aluminum. You're gonna have that fine thread. And then the other three that have got the really elongated coarse thread, those are gonna go into the plastic. I always like to get them all started first before we tighten anything down. All right. And just put our handle back on. Okay, so we know everything going down to that motor is fine. So at this point, we've either got an issue with the brushes or we've got an issue with the armature in the fields. So we're, we're getting power all the way down. And we know that because we've just tested it all. We've got solid connections. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and unplug our back cover here with these two screws. They're also T20. And it comes off. And it looks like we've got good brushes. Yep. So as we're looking here, as I'm pulling this off, it looks like whoever replaced the brushes, I guess, didn't get the spring clip back on correctly. It's really the only way that happens. Nobody ever tells you, hey, I tried to replace the brushes though. But it looks like the spring clip here is on the bottom side. So it's probably springing it a little bit, but it's not springing it all the way enough to make that contact. Now it probably would. I wonder if it would originally. So I've got it pushed up there now as I was, like I would be a person doing it, 
Yeah, so I wonder if they replaced the brushes and everything looked good. And then they maybe used it for a while and now it's not working. I'm not 100% sure. They didn't go into much detail about it, but we definitely have the clip is completely out. So it's supposed to be against the back part. Now you want to look at these brushes. They should, they should move freely in and out. If they're not moving freely in and out, if they're getting caught up at all, that'll be an issue for it not running. You also want to look at the armature surface. If the armature here is scratched up or anything like that, all the way along here, if that armature here is scratched up, you're going to run into an issue with it not running right. Now, um, they have like commentator paper and stuff like that that you can use to kind of clean it up sometimes where you can just kind of that or a commentator stone where you can just kind of hold it against it while it's running uh, to get it into a better shape but make sure that that is not all scratched up if it's all scratched up your brushes are going to burn up real quick and the laminations once they start to fold over onto one another once there's not this gap in between them that'll cause your unit to burn up so sometimes you have to undercut those if they get real bad on older units but Springs are good. Everything's springing good at this point on both sides. So once we got in here, we realized what the issue was real quick. So at that point, if your brushes are bad, you can go ahead and replace the brushes, but that's not the case here. We've got everything good to go. All we've got to do basically is put our cover back on and we've got the problem solved. So. Whoever replaced the brushes to begin with, probably the homeowner. It's not a uh, construction company on this one. It's just a regular old homeowner, but most likely the homeowner tried to replace them themselves or did it a little while ago. And hey, maybe it worked the first few cuts they were trying to make or something like that. But then that spring came off a little further or something. And then your brush basically wasn't against the um, armature. So it wasn't working. It wasn't giving you any connection at that point. That's the only reason this wasn't working. So that should give you everything you need to know about these. There's really not a whole lot uh, as far as the unit goes. You know, there's just a few wires to your switch, a few wires to your cord, and it goes straight down to your brushes, your armature, or, or I'm sorry, your brushes and your fields. There's nothing else to it. So that should give you everything you need to know. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.